So don't let the shininess of the car fool you in these great lights. It's not good. You know, the car is a mess. I mean, really, really dirty. Um, I'm not sure the paint, I don't think there are any scratches or swirls. I mean, or at least there aren't any swirls. We'll, we'll sort of determine the amount of scratches here in a, in a few. But on um, first thing I always do, I'm gonna sort of get the wheels, get the wheels dialed. I'm not gonna remove the wheels. I'm not gonna polish them. Uh, I'm just gonna use uh, Hydrate or Hydro 2, CarPro Hydro 2 on them. First thing I always do is remove the little knobbies. Sort of cleans up the look. Luckily, Pilot Super Sports don't have a ton. And all I'm using is a regular old razor blade just to aid in getting it cut nice and tightly to the, to the rubber. It's just one of those things that I hate seeing. What we're going to do on the, on the tires today is I'm going to test out the, my new Shine Supply hot, um, Wise Guy, which everybody raves about, or guys who have discovered it rave about. So we're going to use that on the tires, and then we'll, <coughs> excuse me, we'll determine whether or not I need to use something more sort of aggressive to prep it for sort of my final Carpo Pearl. The other thing I might try is I've got some rubber prep stuff from, shoot, what the heck is that company? Nanolex. But I'll, you know, so that's probably what I'll end up doing. Clean it with some Wise Guy 2 to 1 dilution and then follow. So these are the ones you gotta carefully don't hit the wheel. Anyway, the wise, the wise guy solution is two to one dilution. So basically, fill the bottle up halfway with water and fill the rest with the wise guy. Wise, or shine supply wise guy. Something tells me it's almost not even worth doing this effort on the rear because <laughs> they aren't gonna last very long. You know, I've noticed a lot of comments about why didn't you get an R? And, you know, clearly if you haven't had any interest in buying one of these cars, you'd, you'd probably know that, you know, an R just isn't practical. It isn't available. And the R really isn't all that much different. You know, it's in the front end here. And what I'll probably do as we're going through the video, I'll sort of come around and sort of talk about the R and some of the differences and uh, at least what I know about the differences. Uh, but right in the front here, of course, of course the R has slightly bigger, f wider, wider front, uh, front end. If you opt for the, you know, the carbon, carbon fiber wheels, of course, that's super cool. Um, I actually think these wheels look better. I'm going to do aftermarket either way, so it really doesn't matter uh, all that much. But yeah, in the R, you have 305s, and then you have a stiffer front spring. Uh, and, and so that's the sort of the big difference here in the front. Uh, but again, for, for me, I think that, you know, there's been a lot of talk about sort of tram lining and the, the R tends to sort of grab every little sort of nook or cranny in the road. Uh, I didn't notice that at all with even with these big old 295s up front uh, on the on the non R. Um, but again, you know, the R is just not not a, an option. I mean, unless you're going to spend a hundred grand on it or maybe, okay, maybe I can get it for 90. So now I'm going to buy a Ford for, for $30,000 over sticker. I'm not doing that. Uh, I'm not even paying sticker over the, for the, for over sticker for this either. I don't collect things. Um, so you can say sort of collector car, I guess, but I'm going to drive the crap out of this thing. I'm going to drive it all over the place. So um, even if I was going to get an R, I'm not going to pay over sticker for it. Would I have purchased it if it was an option for, you know, 5,000 bucks more than this? Then, yeah, I probably would have. I would have hated the red stitching inside. Um, but anyway, the front end, the simple difference is that we have um, um, red brakes, different springs, slightly stiffer springs, which you could easily swap out. 
uh, which I'm going to end up doing some sort of aftermarket spring on the magnetic shock anyway, uh, and then wider, wider wheels and tires, which, I mean, I, I always have a tendency to prefer slightly narrower fronts so that I don't get a lot of sort of tram lining and the steering doesn't feel heavy. So we have a very, very different, you know, I've done so many different wheel cleaning videos over the years, uh, but I have a very different setup, different buckets, different dolly, different, um, different uh, gar you know, garage or washing area, uh, MTMM 407 with the K165 STS. Um, I'm probably going to start selling these just to make it easier for you guys, uh, but I do have a quick connect kit that's, that's sort of set up for, for like the Kranzel pressure washer that you can buy on, on ObsessedGarageStore.com. Um, you know, I've got bucket vinyl and all that stuff. I'm still working on buckets. I've got the right buckets, now I just need to figure out how to make it practical to sell them. I'd like to actually screen print on them, so they're print on them so they don't have to do, we don't have to do vinyl anymore. I don't think it will cost all that much more. The buckets are cheap, they're, especially if I buy them in bulk. They just make it easier on everybody and make it so that the, you know, the, the vinyl doesn't get bubbly and things like that. Um, we also, I'm also using completely different products. Now these are obviously steel brakes. So, you know, this is going to be a lot more work. Uh, I guess good for videos, bad for me and my back, <laughs> if you will. Uh, but I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do just to sort of prep you on what the plan is here. Um, first, uh, I'm going to do sort of just spray it down, hose it down. Uh, I need to get some Hyde's rust serum. I sort of threw all the stuff away because I thought I was done with steel brakes, but maybe that wasn't a good idea. Uh, so I'll get some Hyde's, uh, Hyde's rust stopper um, so that I can sort of uh, hit the rotors um, when, you know, when, when I, um, after wash. I also need to get a lug brush now that I have sort of these deep lugs and they're going to get all dirty. Now I'm using a, a fancy detail brush from, uh, from MONYC that I shouldn't be using for wheels. Uh, but first I'm going to rinse it down um, and then I'm going to follow, put some uh, onesie Einzet Color Tech wheel cleaner on here to get a good sort of deep cleaning on the wheels. Uh, that'll also sort of remove iron and all, all of that stuff from the, from the, uh, from the wheels. Uh, then I'm going to do the tires with the, with the Wise Guy, uh, Shine Supply Wise Guy diluted two to one uh, and uh, I'm not sure how to use the Nanolex. This is an Nanolex uh, tire and rim or tire and rubber restorer. Um, so I'm going to use this for the first time. I think basically I just put it on. I wonder if it makes sense to, um, uh, I don't know how to use this stuff. So we're going to figure it out together. I think that you know, it doesn't give you any sort of use instructions. I don't know. We'll see. We're going to play with it and see how it works. And then I'm not going to worry about claying or doing anything like that. I'm going to just put Hydro 2 on the wheels and call it a day. Uh, these wheels probably won't be on this car for very long anyway, so we might as well not sort of waste too much time on it. These uh, rotors, or I'm sorry, calipers are pretty darn ugly. <laughs> they have this weird sort of gray finish. It almost looks like they're faded and old. It's awesome Brembo brakes. Sure, hit the caliper. So I'll let that sit for uh, for a minute or so, and then. Uh, then we'll come back to you and, and start working on this. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention, uh, somebody made somebody uh, made a suggestion, and I, I'm going to take them up on this, but um, uh, Auto Finesse in the UK, uh, which nobody's importing into the US anymore, so I'm just going to have to make an order and pay the, pay the import and the shipping. Um, but they have a, a sort of their own sort of wheel woolly design that, because part of the problem with these big brakes is that a wheel woolly, especially the bigger one with the longer handle, just doesn't reach. Uh, and that wool wheel woolly I like better than the, than the easy detail brush. Uh, these don't clean quite as well and I'm sure they're more susceptible to scratch and you know, they're not as soft. So I'm going to order those. They make a, a thinner version, a long-handled thinner version that sort of you can get into the wheels. So thanks to I forget who it was it who it was that suggested that to me, um, but I'm going to I'm going to get 
a set of those uh, to get sort of, especially behind the big carpet ceramics, to get deeper in the wheel without getting the thing all jammed up. So we'll let that sit for two minutes or so, and I'll come back. Come right back to you. Okay, this has been on here for a few minutes. I went to the back and cut off all the knobbies. I prefer this onesie Einz at ColorTech, this heavy duty wheel cleaner. It's in a Griot's bottle, but it's not. It's not Griot's, it's onesie. I prefer this because it, over like say Sonax, uh, full effect, it, it lathers. Oh shoot, there's no fitting behind that sucker right there. Guess I'm gonna have a dirty spot or two. These big old rotors. That's all right, if we clean it every time, we might have a hard time getting some. Getting some hydro too back there, but. I'm not gonna remove the wheels. I mean, you know, I know there's there are different levels of detailing, but. My level is what you're seeing. <clears throat> you know, it's time to retire my Griot's lambskin. It's getting a little moldy looking. Let me get a new one. Brand new fresh mitt. <clears throat> so that, unfortunately, they don't make these anymore. Um, probably do the lugs first. And this is not a proper lug brush. This is a fancy boar's hair detail brush. Which I don't really use for much, but just to get it cleaned out, it'll be fine. Okay, let's clean up the face. Just take a little while to kind of break in. So, I guess there's no sense in talking about it since it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, these wheels aren't bad to clean. Good thing, because they're gonna be cleaning them lots. Okay. So we got the faces all cleaned up. Let's see how this lathers up. So I still get the full sort of cleaning of a heavier duty wheel cleaner. But I get the feel good aspect that I'm doing some work. You know, I mean, full effect works. I just prefer this, the way that this reacts. All right, so we have the typical soap markings on the tires that I'll get off first. With a scientific fingernail. Looks like I don't have any red dots on these. Oh, yeah, there it is. normally have like a red and yellow dot. Figures my red dot is all the way down at the bottom. Let's test. 
test this stuff out. This is my new bottle that I'm still testing. Yeah, and I don't want to just come out with something. I've been working on creating new bottles. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I posted some pictures of some bottles. I, I guess I made some videos of that too. It certainly makes more dirt. I guess that means it's working better, right? Let's get in here without trying to without jacking up the wheels. I love this Tough Shine brush so much. It's so simple, so cheap. Oops, missed one. have it clean now let's just do this wet uh, you know what might be a good idea let me just blow this off real quickly all right so just hit that with a little just so that it's not completely soaked and then let's use the nanolex on the tires I wonder if this is designed to be a... to be a final step or if this is like a rubber cleaner. This certainly feels more like a final step. But I don't know, we'll try. Can't hurt to try, right? So that was not very scientific, but it's sort of like a gel type finish, but it looks like it's, a, it's supposed to like absorb into the rubber. So we'll see how that combo works. Uh, dang, I missed a bunch of these things. I put a little Nanolex on the, on the sponge and then put it on the tires just to kind of see what it does. Yeah, it looks like this is more of a final step. I should probably read what it's about. Um, but anyway, you probably shouldn't put it on wet either. Yeah, that's, that's not what I want. It's too shiny. Let's get this crap off. So it's not a, like a Griot's rubber prep. It's just a finishing product. So we'll just put, it probably all won't, won't all come off here. So we'll do some Carpro Pearl afterwards. So we're gonna Hydro 2 it. It's Carbro Hydro 2 Light, which just means it's pre-mixed.
The problem is I got some Hydro 2 all over the bottle, so now it's like super uh, hard to hold on to. It's slick. So, you know, I'm gonna do my best to not hit the rotors. It doesn't really matter. I don't wanna hit the caliper and then all of the wheels. I found that this just works better. I get to put it on every now and then, and it's easier to do than taking the wheels off and trying to coat them. I'll also hit the Fender wells. So that's the wheels, tires. Um, yeah, don't don't use this stuff unless you like shiny. I'll probably probably do some Grios rubber prep on it after it dries. So you, know, you again, you, you have the option to take off the wheels and clay bar them, which I usually do and have done many, many times. But um, I've just found that this using this sort of Hydro 2 sort of combo, I get better beading, better sort of brake dust resistance, and even then even a coating. I mean, if you really wanted to do it properly, you should probably take the wheels off, coat the wheels, and then follow with some Hydro 2. I, you know, I, I've, you know, this has sort of been the process that I've been using for a little while, and it, it, it works really, really well. Like the, the black satin, you know, especially since the satin wheels, you really can't clay bar them or anything. Um, you can certainly coat them, um, but I just, I haven't had any issues just sort of doing this simple step, and then I get a, you know, a good solid, especially with these that have a slight gloss to them. They're, they're sort of a satin finish, but there's a slight gloss to that satin finish, which I really, really like. Um, the I think the Hydro 2 is going to do just fine on its own. So I'm going to go around and do all the wheels the same way. Um, and gosh, I got to deal with this water issue. It just sits right here. Um, and so I'm going to go around and do the rest of the wheels, and uh, I'll come back to you guys in, in, uh, in, in some of the other videos. Uh, so make sure you check out because I'm going to again I'm going to separate the videos here. So make sure you check out the whole process. What happens when the when the force pulls you back? Your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. The floor. The floor. 